had dogs that are difficult to groom when they're here. I have, I'm, dog, I'm a dog trainer, I'm not a dog groomer. So, you know, I'm working on other shit. I'm working on behavior, not grooming. But, you know, before the dog goes back, it's Cocker Spaniel, got a poodle down there. I clean them up a little bit. Everybody gets a bath before they go back. Everyone. You know, usually when they're here, they're going to get a bath anyway. But you know what I'm saying? I, I want to I clean the dog up. Some of these long-haired dogs, they get terrible mats. I'm spending... The poodle, I have spent hours cutting mats, splitting mats, or cutting shit out. Um, you know, I was cutting stuff off of his belly. You get sort of like long-haired dogs, you're gonna have to at some point shave the belly. Um, that's That can be real helpful, because that long hair, man, it just gets matted there. Um, sort of defines the look of the dog a little bit. It's no big deal. Um, but I've spent like hours, I could have saved a lot of hours if I would have just bought this. And I got this today. This is this is not a paid endorsement. This is something that I use that, wow. This is a slicker brush by Furminator. Now, I've had, I've always had slicker brushes around, but nothing like, nothing that worked as good as this. This is great. It has one side that's curved and the curved side that you use on anything that's like matted. So you can like use this over the whole dog, get out any mats, and it does, it gets the mats out. You know, you wouldn't think that just a little curve like that would make a difference, it does. And then if you're all done, then you can use the, uh, the straight side. Now the other thing about this brush that is unbelievably awesome is it's comfortable for the dog because it moves, man. It's like it bends with the dog. It's it's so awesome, man. This thing works so good. I would have saved so much time with the poodle. I'll always have one of these around. This is an awesome tool. If you have a cocker spaniel, a poodle, a golden, um, anything that has like long hair that might have a tendency to get matted, get this slicker brush by Furminator. This is... This is really well thought out. Th this ability to like sort of move with the dog, you know, man, it is really quality. I didn't pay that much for this. This was not that expensive. There were other brushes, but I, I noticed the name Furminator and Furminator seems to make a pretty good product. So I'm like, well, I'm gonna spend a little bit more. I'm gonna get the Furminator because I had one down there that, hang on, let me try this. Oh yeah. Yeah, okay. I see, I see why the dogs like it. All right. Um I saw the name Furminator and Furminator came out some years back. I remember ten or fifteen years ago, fifteen years ago they came out with just the Furminator that would uh you know, you use it on a heavy dog and take out the the undercoat and stuff like that. Um and it was expensive. It was real expensive. The prices have come down, but this thing is just unbelievable. How does this work? It just sort of, it moves in there like that. Oh, I see. So this whole thing will rock. See, it rocks a little bit. And, and then this, these are, are rubber. So it really like gives with the contour of the dog. I am really impressed with this. Um, screw a slicker brush that has a button that pushes the hair out that'll just screw up at some point you you put and then the needles or the the what are the pins whatever will get behind the thing that pushes it out and then that's what happened with mine and it just screws it up it's unnecessary you can just pull the hair off it doesn't matter this thing i mean you could use this on i could use this on tonka you know i'm sure it feels good um, but I mean, you got a long haired dog. If you got a long haired dog, you, you need a, a slicker brush. You got a dog with curly hair, like a poodle. You need a slicker brush. This is imperative. I know it seems weird that you would use this on a long haired dog, but that's what, that's what you're supposed to use. Like a curly dog. You, just a little side thing. Okay. That. If you take your dog to get groomed, like there were times that like 
I'd have an owner say, uh, yeah, I don't really want, I want long hair, you know, um, you know, I, I, I don't really want the dog uh, to get a low cut, which it's really doesn't matter, the hair grows back in three months. But, so I try and accommodate them and I'll go take the dogs, taking dogs to groomers early on. And um, I'll still do it, you know, if the dog, if the owner likes the dog shaved down, a lot of owners like that, um, you know, but if you go in there and say like, listen, he's got some mats, I just want to split the mats, they're not going to do it, man. Those, those, those groomers, the young groomers, they're lazy, they're lazy, what they're going to do is they take a comb and then they start like trying to run a comb through the dog's hair. Of course, it's a long haired dog, it's going to get stuck. Well, we have to shave the dog. That's all they want to do. So all they want to do, it's quick, it's easy, we're going to shave the dog. They don't want to split mats. They, they don't want to do shit like that. So I'm just telling you, that's one of their things. As you go in there, you know, they start putting out a comb in a long-haired dog. It doesn't move for a reason because this is the kind of brush you would use on a long-haired, like, curly-type dog. Bichon Frise, whatever it is, um, you know, whatever, you know, dude, I know I'm not going to just go get Sam for you. All right. Can, can we see Sam? You know, I live streamed with him yesterday. Maybe I'll live stream with him later. Okay. I got shit going on. We're, we're trying to get Merlin. Uh, Merlin's going home. So Destiny's working with um, with Merlin today. So we got stuff to do, okay? I'm, I'm talking about a Furminator. This is important. Clearly, you're like some kind of narcissist kid. Like, th for somebody that has a long-haired dog, this could be helpful, this video. So, sorry, but I'm not going to go get Sam. I'm not. Why am I going to do that? Why do people ask that? Can we see Sam? Oh, let me go get him for you. Uh, you know, I'm so much not a fan of his I'm hiding you for even mentioning that loser on my channel. Do you know why he's not making videos anymore? I don't think he is. He wasn't. Are you a fan of him? You can be a fan of whoever you want, but you use that name here, I'm going to get rid of you. I had enough ridiculous children on my channel. I don't care if you're a kid, you know, just don't, t don't, tell, don't tell us you're a kid. Just keep your mouth shut. Sorry, but, you know, I don't want kids on my channel. If, they're on, if they want to watch, that's fine and dandy, but if they say, hey, I'm... Um, under 18, you're going to get, we're just banning you. And every one of the moderators knows this. So we, we just, well, there you go, you know, or you have a child like mine. It's, you know. Well, you just did. So there you go. You know, I mean. Children and there's people with childlike minds. I don't, I don't need that, man. What's up, Toxic? We gotta go work with Mern a little bit. He was doing real good. Um, I just, I, I wanna make sure that there's, like, we're just doing leash stuff with him, like, really basic leash stuff with him. Like, and then that's what I'm gonna concentrate on when they get in town, they will be, you know, they got to leave being able to walk him on a leash and having him heal. You know, he's, he's good. So having somebody else do it, like, you know, Destiny is very helpful because, you know, you know, it's, she has him under control though. He's doing a real good heal with her. Um, but we're also working up doing the hurry, hurry command. So she'll walk him up to a tree, give him a hurry, hurry command. Took a dump for her earlier. It's good, man. He's good. But the, the more the dog picks up on, like, you know, because he wasn't doing it with me. So then we switched into Destiny doing it because he was more apt to do it with Destiny. So then if he tries it with the owners, it'll be easier to, like, get him not to do it with the owners. 
Plus, there's this aspect of like, just me going over it right before the owners get here. It's, it's always helpful, even though I could sort of do it. With I'm glad you, what, joined my channel or joined the... Um, you know, it's just, this dog is like, I'm gonna, I don't know, when I, when I take the dog in, it's gonna be typical, I always have the dog in the crate at first, but this dog is like a special case. It is, it lives with a kid, so I'm, you know, and he does, he's not, you know, he's not a golden, you know, he's a dog that can be around other dogs, but have to monitor him there's no way like the owners couldn't be like yeah bring a dog over and let him romp around in the backyard that's not that's not merlin merlin's never going to be that dog merlin's not gus the retriever merlin will start a fight you have to monitor that dog so you know they, they're gonna have to keep him under control this is the fact I mean, they can, it's fine, but I mean, that dog doesn't need to have dog friends. It doesn't. Your dog doesn't need to have dog friends that has you all. It does, and it should know that it's the bottom of the totem pole. Seriously. Pumpkin did a bit better today. She wasn't squealing when I came back home and I waited for about 30 minutes before letting her out of the kennel. Yeah, and Tox, put her back in the kennel while you're there and just walk around with her in the kennel, get the e-collar on her, and if she, you know, starts squealing or anything, tell her no and put her in the down position. Just get her used to being in the kennel in the new place. She'll be fine, you know? She'll get it. That's, that's the key The dogs, a lot of times, aren't in the kennel long enough with people coming and going. Like Merlin's downstairs. I had to walk through there and leave. I'm upstairs now. Uh, Merlin's down there to go. I went out to uh, use the cultivator on the um, garden. I left. When we came home, we went to um, get some fertilizer for the garden because it's just stripped. And um, when we came home, uh, he didn't. He barked once when I went in, and I told him to shut up as I was going in. It was fine, but. Um, you know, his tendency to you gotta you gotta be, you know, uh, tell this dog to shut its mouth for sure. Um, yeah, he's not barking right now. Um, you know, but they, I, I, I worry, I worry about this dog because he's in a house with a kid. That makes it much more difficult for the dog. He always has the kid telling him the wrong thing. It doesn't matter. The kid is always going to be telling the dog the wrong shit, you know. And you can't tell a kid not to do it. They just do it. You know, you can't rationalize with the baby. So you got to, you know, and it's not, like I said, he's not a golden. He's not, uh, you know, he's not, he's not a golden. It's more like a Chesapeake Bay. His temperament is pissy. He is. He'd, he'd, he'd fight. He'd fight with the dog for sure. So th see, that's an issue. You wouldn't want him. And he needs to leave dogs alone, which he will. He will with me. They're, they're going to have to, you know, get him under control. He'll be fine. But he doesn't have to be friends with anybody. And, you know, you know, you know he has to be friends with his family. That's it. He needs to be behave. You know, they don't have to take this dog in a store. They don't. Fuck it. They just need to make sure that nothing happens to the dog and the dog is well behaved. That's it. You know, work the dog. They got a yard. They can work the dog. You know, I mean, don't don't complicate the thing. But like I said, like there's a stroller involved. Yeah, if, if, if I had a baby, if I had a baby and I had that dog, that dog would be walking with me on a stroller. But they're not me. I'll be able to, they'll have a stroller with them, I hope. I'll be able to walk that dog with a stroller. I guarantee you. I hope they hear this and they bring this damn stroller. But that, because I do it, doesn't mean that an owner can do it. The owner has to practice. I'm fucking 58 years old. I was running dogs when I was a kid. 
I was asking questions to my dad when I was in like first grade. Why is it always on the left hand side, dad? You know? They're not me. Can they be me? Oh yeah, they could. Can the can the wife with the stroller walk Merlin on a can she? She could. It would take practice. And she's going to have to bump. I've, I've never met the woman. I know that she's a slight woman like Destiny. She's not big. But the thing of it is, is we were, t me and Destiny were talking about this earlier. Like you don't, you finesse the dog. It's not about power. It's a quick snap. It changes the dog's mind instantly. It's not like you're doing a correction. You're pulling the dog. You don't pull the dog. You don't need to be a big person to be able to do this. Destiny's tiny. She's really, she's really small. So, can the can the owner with the stroller do it? Yeah, she could. She could. Destiny had a baby. She, you know, she just had to practice with the dog, without the kid in the stroller. You know, make sure the dog was stable around other dogs. If you see on the street, the dog has to be stable with the owner. Period without the stroller, because you bring in the stroller, it makes it more difficult. Then you bring in the kid, more difficult again. So you gotta practice, practice. Me, I practiced with this dog for 90 days. Will that dog walk with me with a stroller? Yeah, fuck yeah, he better. He walked with me doing one hand with a shopping cart. And he didn't bark at anybody, he didn't do anything, but was I careful with the dog in the store? You betcha. You betcha, because you don't want anything to happen, because once it happens, it's too late. That's like dogs that don't bite. This is true. They don't bite, and then they do. And then the owner says, well, my, no my dog never did that before. What's the subspecies of the wolf? And when dogs get excited, they do this. They bark, lunge, and bite. Usually in that order. He'll already bark. Um, he was lunging. He'll lunge. And um, it gets excited trying to nibble your butt or something. That's a bite. Anytime a dog touches you with its mouth, it's disrespectful. It's disrespecting you. Believe me, I love the dog. The dog's great. Can they do it? I'll tell you one thing about the owners. They did have it. They did train it to do some things. This is this is no shit. The dog could do some shit coming here. It, could, it couldn't do some stuff, but they, they do have the ability, to, obviously, to train the dog to do some stuff, you know, which some dogs come here not being able to do jack shit. So I, I'm assuming, I assume that these people are going to, come on, they spent all this money on training. I'm assuming that they're going to step up. I haven't met the woman yet, you know. I've talked to the, 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 the male owner. He seems, I don't know how involved the female owner was in the training, but I'm telling you, Merlin came here being able to do some shit. He could, he could do, I swear to God, man, there's two weeks here, and I was like, we can do sit, and he can do down, and he can do whoa. Let's see if he can do push-ups, and he did it. I, I think that he was able to do a reverse retrieve from like, like a five or six foot reverse retrieve, something like that. Now he can do, I don't know, a thousand, fifteen hundred feet, two thousand, I don't know how long. You know, it's an amazing dog, it is. But obviously the, the uh, I, think, I, think, I think the female owner is into, into the dog. I think she, she wanted a poodle in particular. It's a strange breed. See, I, I, I knew two poodles as a kid, and I, but they were always like this. They were always like this. Every poodle I ever knew. Always like this. The standard poodles. Tommy Green, I walk into his house. Here would come the poodle barking at us. Sort of getting in my face. And then um, I tried to pet him once. Tommy said, uh... Oh, be careful, he might bite you or something like that. I don't want to get the dog in trouble. I've been around dogs so long. I was, all right. But I, I, I think he's cool with me. And so the dog was cool with me. 
But um, who are, there were other people that I knew that had standards. They're all the same. Black chocolate. Uh, I knew a white white one that was white, not like this apricot. Um, they're always like this. They're sort of uh, territorial. They're yappy. You know, they're yappy. You got to tell them to shut up. Tommy Green's family didn't do it. They wanted him to be like that. They live in they was uh, in a in a very affluent area, and I think that they just liked having a dog like that as security. They appear big. They're not big, but they are sort of. They can be aggressive. You know, this. Uh, I don't. I don't know what. You know. Th listen. Don't ever read anything on the internet about the temperament of a dog. Because it's all just sort of bullshit on the internet. You know, it's fucking chewed out, chewed up and spit out again and again and again. Most of those people that are writing that shit have never owned that dog. And there's different personalities. I'm telling you, poodles are all like him. They are. They're all like him. Can sort of be like... I swear to God, Tommy Green said, every time we came, here comes that, here comes the fucking poodle. I can't remember its name. Then they got another poodle. It was the same way. We come walking in the door. Here comes the poodle to make sure that barking, you know, bark, 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 bark you know, real loud too, a real loud bark, you know, kind of, kind of aggressively comes at you, you know, but uh, uh, conflicting body language in other words and sort of similar to him and that like he's sort of aggressive but sort of a pussy like you know you know what i'm saying like some dogs that like you see this conflicting thing like i'm aggressive but you know it's like a fearful thing or something like a fear bark like i don't i don't trust you it's you know gotta tell the dogs always shut up that's key but uh, I was thinking of getting a poodle. And I was thinking about getting a doodle. That was right before Ike. It's going to turn out to be a water dog. Because I saw, I saw a poodle. Like I've said this so many times. I saw a poodle do field trials when I was younger. And it was badass. It was like him. It was like him. Like real fast. Totally into it. You know, like... The, the dog was doing... Um, like... Uh, cast the, the owner would like send the dog out, blow a whistle. The uh, poodle would stop, sit, look at the owner, real intense. Merlin hasn't picked this up yet. He's 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 going to. All the owner has to just keep doing it. Real intense. Waiting for the command. Back and then the fucking or you know right or left cast. Merlin Merlin will pick up on it. Um. He is picking up on it because he knows he can't go get the retrieve until I release him. So you just wait. The dog has to meet your eyes. If you throw a retrieve and it sit, the dog's sitting in front of you and you're going to right or left cast it, a dog's sort of looking at it. You have to wait until the dog looks at you for from back. And then they'll start turning their head quicker, right? And you make them, you make them look at you longer. Back. He's fucking badass. It's, I'm not shitting. It's a badass dog. It's a badass dog. I just, I, you know, if there wasn't a kid involved, I'd be like, you know, as a kid, man, it just puts everything into like danger zone, you know. I was a kid, you know, I was young, I was 16 or something, but if I would have been younger. You know, say I was eight or something, Tommy Green's dog, I was short, would have been tried to intimidate me, I'm sure, because it was trying to intimidate me as a teenager, you know, intimidate me, but also a pussy at times, like, but they, the dog got to know me, and when the dog was, oh, there, there's that human again, I'm fine, he'd shut up, but very, very much like, like Merlin, you know. And I never got, I, I think that the Greens let the dog run around ha the house seriously as like a, um, people make mistakes. It's like security. 
it lived in this big house. It was like one of those areas that you could see that if you were gonna rob somebody's house, you wanna go somewhere where people have stuff, that would be the Green's house. So I think that there was a, and I, as I remember, I think their house did get hit. But um, I was, I'm thinking about somebody else. But uh, nevertheless, like the, the dog would have had less problems if it would have been contained more and not just given free reign. That's never really a good, that's not a good thing for a dog or letting your dog look out the window. It just, that's real bad. It ends up being bad. You know, but I, I love the poodle. I love the poodle. But hang on, let let me rephrase something. I got like, well, the poodle isn't a golden. That doesn't mean that a golden. I'd still be concerned if there was a kid in the house. This is a golden. Has a different kind of temperament. It does. It's more like related. You know, it's just like, I'm a big idiot. You know. Um, they're excitable, but they don't have a tendency to, uh, like they're, you know, lunge, or, you know, if they're gonna lunge on you, they're gonna wanna, you know, they're coming at you like this. You're gonna pet me, you know, you're gonna pet me, you know, wagging their tail like that. That's not really what he does. That's not, that's not what he does when he gets excited. So this is, two different kinds of dogs, but I'm not saying that you couldn't have problems with the golden. You bet you, you could. There is bite history on just about every breed. They're on every breed. Some more than others. Hell, there was a uh, fucking years ago, I remember a story about a Labrador that killed a woman in, uh, in St. Louis. You know, my dad, me and my dad were talking about, I go, really? It was a lab? He goes, yeah, it was a lab. I said, well, maybe it was one of those just black dogs that you get from the shelter. He said, no, it was an actual AKC lab. I was just like, you know. Yeah, well, uh, smart really isn't that important when you talk about a dog. When you talk about a dog, you want somebody that's a willing participant, right? And, you know, a good temperament to be around. You know, he is smart. Poodles are smart, but, you know, a working dog, you don't need a dog to figure stuff out. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like Labradors, I've owned Labradors my whole life. By the way, that list of like the smartest dogs, I take that with a grain of salt, okay? But it is true that you might be able to take a border collie and teach it the uh, names of 12, 1200 different objects. And maybe the Labrador, you can only train it to do six, 600. But is it really necessary? You know what I'm saying? Like you're taught, you know, what, what's, what's the point? But uh, like I've always owned Labradors and Labradors, they is in that list and it's not too far down. It's like one of the smartest dogs. They're not that smart. They're, they're, they're not. Man, would you stop with this fucking, I'm not doing it, man. I'm sorry. I'm not doing this. I was just talking about this, how ridiculous it is, and I've seen the list, and poodles were number two. So I don't really care what list you're looking at. I don't really care. It's fucking stupid. It's, it's just stupid, okay? It doesn't matter. It doesn't, and I'm, I'm sick of people. Every dog is trainable, okay? And I'm sick of people labeling, labeling their dog stupid because they didn't get it trained. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of people putting this price, you know, this like some kind of price on the, on the dog. Oh, is it smart? It doesn't have to be smart. That's not helpful. It isn't helpful. Is it trainable? That's helpful. Labs are not super smart. You know what labs are? Real common. They're real common. It's like the most popular AKC breed, or it was. So of course it's on the list. It's nonsense. Stop worrying about if the animal is smart. Worry about if it's trainable. It doesn't matter. It's a dog. They all can learn the same stuff. That's a fact. Every dog that comes here, think about all the breeds that come here. They all do the same stuff. So shut up with this 
worrying about if it's smart. You better worry about its temperament and if it's trained or not. That's what you better worry about. People worrying about the way the dog looks too is nonsense. It's nonsense. It's ridiculous. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. All these dogs are, are ending up in shelters because people will not train their dog. They think that they don't have to do like training. Uh, hang on, let's see what this person's saying. I can't seem to transition my dog from prong collar to just a leather collar. She has about everything down with just the leather collar, but gets some reactivity, like pulling and I don't know anything about your dog. I don't, you know, I don't know anything about your dog. I don't know what you want me to say. I don't know the breed. I don't know how old it is. Uh, I don't know. You trained it. See the problem? You trained it. If I trained it, it wouldn't be doing it. There's nothing that I can tell you. Keep training it. But the prong collar is a training collar, okay? It's a training collar. You're supposed to get it off at some point. Okay, most of the dogs that come here, I don't, I don't use them. I just use a flat buckle collar. I did use a slip chain for a day with uh, Lutzi to get him healing better. To, but that's it. So I don't, I don't know what your problem. I don't know your dog, man. You're clearly not a professional because you're asking a question. So, you know. If your dog is bad, it means you're doing something wrong. I guess. Yeah, like if it if it chews up a pillow, it should have been crated. So I guess you're right. Right? If it uh, fucks something up, you weren't watching it close enough. If it gets in a fight with another dog, you're being unrealistic, and you, you didn't watch the dog close enough, you're right. It's all the human's fault. It is. It's always the human's fault. Even dogs that bite, it's always the human's fault. Always. It's a goddamn subspecies of the wolf. What, what, do you, what do you think? Every dog in the right situation can bite. Don't think that it can't. It can and will. And don't be like, oh, my dog will never bite. I'll tell you something. People that say that, their dog gets in a fight with another dog. They're pulling the dogs away. Their own dog turns because they don't think they respond, bites the owner. It breaks the bond with the owner and they're like, how could Fluffy have done that? I've given Fluffy everything. Give me a break, it's a dog, you got bit, stop, stop crying. Next time, don't let the dog get in a fight. This nonsense about like, oh, they have to socialize. Uh, no, they don't. They don't have to go to a dog run, you know. Uh, I'm buying uh, my crate for my husky. Hang on. I'm buying my crate for my six-month-old husky. Any advice? Uh, yeah, you, was, you said that you were supposed to buy it yesterday. Uh, your dog's six months old. It should have been in a crate, um, you know, how many months ago? when it was about eight weeks. That's my advice. I, you know, I wish that I, wish that I could tell you something. You should have had a crate a long time ago. I mean, what are you doing? Letting the dog just run around the house, chew shit up? You just, you should have, you know, you talked about this the other day. You should have gone out and gotten a crate and been using it already. You're talking about you're getting a crate. Don't waste my time. Okay? I'm sorry. I appreciate your trying, but you're not trying hard enough. You know what's going to happen if you don't try harder? Your dog's going to end up in a shelter. You're going to give up on that dog. It's six months. It's a husky. It's a husky. There's a lot of people don't even want to deal with huskies. You know why? So they can get aggressive. Yeah, stupid Mexican family believes it needs to be free. It doesn't matter what your family is doing. Is it your dog? Tell them to fuck off. Don't listen to them. Tell them Cesar Milan's an idiot. 
I don't know what to tell you. I, I get it. I get it. I understand. It's not, it's not just like you can't say like stupid Mexican family. It, it, it's across the board. It doesn't matter. There's people around, you know, there's somebody down the street that'll get a dog and do the same thing. So it's not, you can't say stupid Mexican family. Don't, don't do that because that's not really true. It's like people have this idea in their head, right? Whether they're, wherever they're from, that, oh, it's, it's jail to the dog or something. And that's not the case. And if you don't use it, you know, you're going to, it's like, okay, you're not going to use it. Well, clearly you look at the dog as being expendable because you don't want to use the most basic tools to keep your dog safe. Eat an electrical cord, um, drywall, your couch, crap all over your house. It'll make it unbearable for you to live with this dog. And then the dog ends up being either banished to the backyard in a kennel or on a chain, which that's horrible. They need to be live inside with, with you. I don't know what to tell you if, you. if you're looking for some kind of thing to feed the damp dog in the crate. Every time you give the dog a meal, feed it in a crate. And the, listen, the dog needs to be in the crate when you're home. Don't just do it when you're leaving. The dog needs to be able to see you walking around the house and get comfortable with the crate. You can't just put the dog in the crate when you're leaving. You should work the dog, train the dog, and put the dog in the crate to decompress. After an hour or so, take the dog back out, train the dog, bring the dog back, put it in the crate to decompress. Do puppies need to be weaned onto a raw diet? Weaned? Weaned. I think you're using the wrong term. The raw diet needs to be ground up for a puppy. If they eat pet food, that's called transitioning. No, you stop giving the pet food and then you give the ground up. It has to be really ground up for the puppy until it gets its adult teeth. Okay? So it has to be ground up for your puppy. Don't just start giving it raw chicken bones and stuff like that. As the dog starts getting about four months, five, four and a half, five months, and its teeth are dropping out, you start giving it semi-smashed up leg quarters, depending on what kind of puppy it is. You know, like, and then do it less and less, and then they have a whole one. You could even smash it up real good and then freeze it and give it to the puppy, right? You could give it... And then that'll help knock out the milk teeth. Okay? So, no, you don't transition. Stop giving it. You never transition into raw diet. The reason for this is the mobility of your raw diet and your, your pet food are completely different. Okay? Listen, if you give raw diet, right, and you give pet food, what happens with the pet food is it expands in the dog. You know, it's dry and whatever expands in the dog and it pushes out the raw undigested. Don't do that. I get rid of you because you're just an idiot. You know, what is that, a kid? Why are dogs' teeth so dirty? What the hell are you talking about? I got a, I got a GSP down there that has the teeth of a puppy, and he's real old, kid. So you are an idiot. Your dog doesn't get tartar on its teeth when it's on raw diet. It should be on a raw diet from birth. Give it... Get some um, pet vitamins or something. Give it a couple pet vitamins a couple times a week, something like that. Make sure it's getting everything. Uh, but it should be it should be on a raw diet, and that's you know low fiber profile raw diet. But make sure that bone's all smashed up. Use chicken bone.
man, you know what? What are my thoughts on it? I give my dog a raw diet. I use a crate and the leg quarter goes into the crate. That's where they eat it. I don't use pet bowls. Those are my thoughts. Why would I use a pet bowl? Even with, even with a puppy, even with a puppy. I take the raw diet that's ground up. That's it. Put it in the crate. That's how most people do it, that know what they're doing. By the way, with your puppy, you don't put a bed in there. You don't put a blanket in there. Why? I'm going to tell you why. It's because your puppy will start chewing on it, and your puppy could acquire something called pica. Pica is um, when a dog uh, chews up and ingests non food food items, it'll kill your dog. Your dog is a dog, it doesn't need a pet bed. Your puppy definitely doesn't need a pet bed. If you have a geriatric dog, okay, maybe you get a pet bed. But your dog that's in good shape, why would it need a pet bed? They they sleep in a dirt hole. They don't just, they lie on their side and go to sleep. They don't need a pet bed. Also, if you put a pet bed or any type of bedding in there with the puppy, they go to the bathroom, a mess. All right? No pet beds, no toy, no toys. You know what? You know what? The one thing that you can put in the crate with the puppy? Listen, there's only one thing that I would ever put in the crate with a puppy, a deer antler. That's it. Nothing else. Nothing. Never put bedding in the in that crate. As a professional, do, do you want to know why I wouldn't put bedding in a crate? Because dogs will chew on it and eat it, and then I got to take them to the hospital, and they could die. They could sleep on a floor. You ever see a dog just lay down on your floor? What's the difference between the floor and the crate? Nothing. Nothing. Stop worrying about the wrong things with your dogs. You know what you need to worry about? Your dog's behavior and training. Stop thinking like, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna get BarkBox and I'm going to buy my dog stuff because why? Because you feel guilt because you don't train the damn dog, do you? You'd rather buy your dog stuff than spend time with it. All right? So I'm just going to buy my, my dog garbage. And, oh, aren't I a great owner? I buy a, a plush toy that my dog rips up. By the way, the fluffing in those plush toys, that's non-digestible. People laugh, oh, I get it for him, and then he, he rips it all up. Oh, isn't that cute? How about the pictures on Facebook of the dogs that, like, rip up the whole room, feathered pillows that's everywhere, and then there's some kind of cute caption under it. That's not cute. It's not cute. It's a bad owner is what it says. That's what it should say. I'm a bad owner and a piece of shit. I don't want to use a crate and look, look at what happened. You have medication around? Your dog gets a hold of medication? Right? Eats the pill bottle? What, you think it doesn't happen? Really? Go talk to your vet. Happens, I was a vet tech, it happens all the time. People eat, uh, dogs eat heart medication, they eat everything. I came home and, and the dog ate all my heart medication, what should I do? Dogs don't do it, and then they do. It's the same thing with dogs don't bite, and then they do. Okay? So you as a dog owner have to look out for the dog. You want the dog, right? You signed a contract with the dog. You signed a contract, and love's not enough. Oh, I gave that dog everything. Yeah, right, except what it needed. And then you felt, you felt betrayed by the dog. Yes. Toxic's correct. All those NSAIDs are toxic to dogs. Aspirin, whatever, it doesn't matter. It, do, it doesn't matter, your, your dog shouldn't be eating it, man. You should be using a crate. How about an electrical wire? You think that that's good for your dog to chew on? How many times has that happened? Is there a time frame of train? Discounting too cold or too hot, there's no too cold. Is there, and too hot? What do you mean? You do it at night. Uh, time frame while training. Is there any time frame while training a dog? 
heel, for example, I'd assume training involves retrieving more activity would be shorter. I, I don't know what I don't know what you're saying. I, I train dogs all year round, so I don't know what you're talking about. I, I don't know. I don't know what you mean, man. If it's hot out, you can train the dogs at night. So like if it's real hot, like over 100, train them at night or early in the morning. Early in the morning, it's real hot out. You could still do retrieves before the sun comes up. Once the sun comes up, it's beating down on the dog. Don't do retrieves because they, they pant. You know, that's how they cool down. If I went outside right now, five minutes, 10 minutes until she is tired, it's not about doing it until they're tired. You're missing, you don't know what you're doing. That's not what you're doing. How old is the dog? That's, that's not how it's done. You don't train them until they're tired. You wanna put them up wanting to do more. It's, it's not about working the dog until they're tired. And you have to do it multiple times during the day. You don't just do it once until they're tired. This is a problem. This is a pro this is why we have a problem, why we have so many dogs being put down. People don't get it. I'm not going off on you, man. I don't do that. I was trying to clarify my question. She's five, she's five years old. It's a five-year-old dog. If it was a five-year-old dog and it was fully trained, you could train the dog for about 15 minutes, no more, right? Maybe... Depending, say a five-year-old dog comes here and it has zero training, right? It has zero training. I might just go outside and train it for two minutes and start building the dog up, all right? Best way to deal with vomit and diarrhea, your dog's vomiting and has diarrhea, you better call the vet. Why are you asking that question? Your dog's vomiting? I was a vet tech, not a vet, okay? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you, what I'm telling you to do is take your dog to the vet. Diarrhea, not that big of a deal though. You can, a lot of people fast the dog. They fast the dog and then feed the dog about half as much. But if your dog has diarrhea, generally your dog's probably on pet food. Pet food gives your dog diarrhea because there's a lot of, um, like cook, uh, cooked bone in there. Because, see, they put calcium in dog food. He ate his diarrhea, and so he vomited. Well, you're a bad dog owner. Why, why wasn't the dog on a leash? Why, why wasn't he on a leash? I mean, seriously. What, what's your problem? That's, that's sad. So you let the dog just eat its, he's in his crate overnight. I'll tell you what, if, it, if a dog, if a dog comes here, there's no dog that's eating their feces in a crate. So uh, it happened as, so what? How old is the dog? That's not the five-year-old dog, right? How old is this dog? You gotta clean it up, I'll tell you that. That would smell horrible, wouldn't it? You about to vomit cleaning it up? Right? And why does your dog have diarrhea is the more important question. Is your dog on pet food? That's what I was just talking about. Pet food has a uh, bone meal in it, and bone meal is the cooked bone. Cooked bone is an irritant to your dog. They eat raw, so almost, yeah, it's on pet food, yeah, so that's your fault. So it has um, a lot of things that are irritants to dogs, and dogs that are on pet food, they get diarrhea all the time. That's why most people that have dogs, they have them on a raw diet. All right, which is the base diet is uh, chicken leg quarters. There's no dog down there that has diarrhea. There's no way. You know, you got your dog on a bad diet, you know. 
they go outside, they get anoritis, it's the crate. I mean, it didn't whine. Did it, you know, where, where were you that you didn't know that the dog was sick? It's, it's a little bit over a year old. Well, you better switch its diet. And you know, where, where were you? It was in a crate overnight, it didn't whine. I found out at 7 a.m. Well, maybe you better sleep closer to the crate because I bet that the dog wanted to go out, right? You hear a dog whining in the crate at night. I gotta get up. I gotta take the dog out because I don't wanna clean it up if that was the case. But man, if your dog's on raw diet, that, what you're talking about is like dog on pet food, you know? I don't know why it ate its uh, diarrhea. No whining. I have young children, therefore worried. Why do you get a dog? Don't you have your hands full? It sounds like you have your hands full, right? You have your hands full. Why did you get a dog? It's 18 months old. You know, you have young kids. What, what, what's the problem? You worried about getting salmonella or something? You're not gonna get salmonella from the chicken at Walmart from Tyson. They're, it's inoculated in the egg, in the egg before it's even born. It's not gonna get salmonella. I don't I don't know. You can think whatever you want. I can't. You know I'm, I you know I mean I'm sorry, but like you know you wanted a dog, but it sounds like you have your plate full. Um, I see, I mean, you know, you better make your life easier and switch the dog to a raw diet. If you didn't consider this, you didn't, I'm sorry, you didn't consider this when you got the dog, did you? There's going to be more, dogs aren't about convenience. Feed the dog the raw diet in the crate. I don't know what size dog it is, but if it's a normal size dog, you go one leg quarter, two leg quarters a day. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree with that. Um, I, I think you sound ridiculous. I agree. You got young kids, man, and you got a, and now you have an 18 month old dog that had diarrhea in the crate. I bet you get rid of that dog. I bet you do. I bet you do. You'd be like one day, you'll be like, oh shit, I'm cleaning up poop again. And then I got to clean up the kid. You know, why, why'd you get the dog? Why do people do it? I don't know, man. I tell people that whenever they contact me not to get a, a dog, if they have kids and the, the kids, you know, the dogs are always terrible around the kids. You tell the kid to stop, but it's not gonna make any difference. I gotta go eat something and go work with Merlin. I mean, I'm I'm sorry, but I'm just telling you the truth. Like, I I just I just uh, I don't I don't get the um, I don't get the I have young kids. Um, I can't I can't have the dog on raw. I mean, what about beef? What's up, Craig? What about beef? You have to add calcium, though. You have to add calcium. Ow! Ow, my leg. I gotta take a Celebrex, go find Destiny, and we gotta get Merlin out. Mur. We gotta get Murray out. All right, so, um... We're just, we're just, uh, we're just going. I was just on here for almost an hour. Bitching at people, talking about where's where's my this this Ferminator brush is freaking awesome. I will, Craig. Thank you. I really appreciate it. This thing this would work good on a on a short haired dog too. But I mean, it's got for mats. This thing it works good. I gotta go. I gotta go find Destiny.